That looks good. So you're thinking about buying a used backhoe. Well, my name's Ben Krentz, co-owner of Con Equip Parts, and I'm here to help you out about looking at a used backhoe. A couple pointers and some things that you might want to look for. Okay, we'll start up front here. First thing, there's a lot of hydraulic cylinders on these machines. And with hydraulic cylinders, there's a couple things you want to look for just solely on that. I'll kind of go through these pretty quick. Some might be basic to some. Some others might say, hey, you know what? Thanks for that. And that's what we're going for. So hydraulic cylinders. First off, want to make sure that the seals aren't leaking all over the place. You'll be able to visually see it. Just a bunch of hydraulic fluid coming out underneath the cylinders. We got some other cylinders back here. Uh, these would be the lift cylinders. So these cylinders up here would be the bucket tilt cylinders. You want to see if there's a lot of play in the pins and bushings inside the hydraulic cylinders. Kind of a simple way to do it. Let's see how loose she is here. You ready? Give it a little, little. She's got some play in her. It's all right. It's a used machine. You chose to pay thousands of dollars less versus a new one. That's a consideration. Pins and bushings, we got them available. They're gonna range in between 100 to some of the big excavators, be a couple hundred dollars. Next thing up front here, double check the loader arms, okay? You gotta really look at these. These things crack. A lot of stress gets put into these things, so please be vigilant on looking them over. Um, they have some factory weld the seams together, those are okay. But typically up by the pins and the connection here, There'll be some fractures you can see in it. Uh, likewise, up in this area and down where the bucket connects as well. Next thing on the front end here, you have to decide what type of material and conditions am I gonna be using this machine for? Do I need a two-wheel drive? Do I need a four-wheel drive? Well, up front here, this particular JCB backhoe is a four-wheel drive unit. It can go through snow like we have here in Buffalo. We get a couple feet or so a year. Uh, could go through some mud as long as the tire tread is good, which is another thing to look for. With four-wheel drive, there's some components up front because it has a front axle assembly. So let's take a look at that again, shall we? You got to get down and dirty. Oh, look at that. That's a beauty. Yep, that's a solid front axle assembly. Center differential. Doesn't look like it's leaking too much. I'm also looking at the swing uh, or the swivels. The swivels are good. And... There's no cracks in the swivels. The tie rod ends and steering cylinders look good. You gotta check that over. That stuff can get expensive. <clears throat> um, so it depends on what you're looking for. If you got a landscape yard, you're just gonna use the backhoe for loading mulch and a couple odds and ends. Two wheel drive might be okay for you. That'll save you a few thousand dollars in initial cost up front but also thousands of dollars down the road when you have to buy a, a rebuilt front axle assembly. <clears throat> so four wheel drive versus two wheel drive. The next thing too would be the bucket up in front. Uh, some machines come like this one has a four in one bucket, combination bucket, whatever you want to call it. Uh, you might not need it for your application, but these buckets are expensive and they also have hydraulic cylinders on them as well. Uh, if you need, again, maybe at a landscape yard, you need a bigger bucket, a one yard bucket, one and a half yard bucket so you can load customers efficiently and quick. That might be an option for you because a bucket alone probably be about 1200 bucks good used. If we move on back, center part of the cab, we actually have the cab. Depending on where you're from, Buffalo, New York, I would want a cab that has glass and a thing called a heater. Yes, we need that. Very, very important for this area up in the Northeast. They do have ones that have just a open wraps we have to hold on for UPS here. Hey buddy, ain't nothing wrong with UPS. Okay, they do a lot of shipping for us. Cab glass, if you're looking at one with a cab on it, uh, we can get cab glass, fairly inexpensive, typically under two, 300 bucks a piece. The other thing to look for on a cab itself is the floor of the cab and a button to even open the door. If you look on the cab of the floor, it could be completely rusted out. You know, you think about it, up here in the Northeast again, you guys that are, are running uh, heavy boots that got a lot of salt in them from the winter time, it's just gonna rust the floor out. 
okay? Out on the ocean side, you got a lot of salt out there too. It just happens. So if you got to replace a cab, now you're talking four, five, six grand sometimes uh, to get a cab replacement, let alone the labor to do so. You got hydraulic tanks, one side, typically the diesel's on the other side. Uh, side note, when you're doing it, make sure your operators know how to read hydraulic versus diesel. You don't want to switch them, bad things happen. They get rusted on the inside, so it's kind of hard to tell just on the outside. You can't open the cap and look in and say, oh, yeah, it looks good. It's, there's fluid there, okay? Just visually look at it on the outside. Maybe tap it, maybe a little bit of tappy tap. Sounds pretty solid. This one's good to go. Moving on to the rear part of the machine, we kind of mentioned the tire tread. Double check on that. Make sure it's pretty decent for what you're going to be doing. Got a rear axle assembly. Again, checking the final drive hub area, making sure there's no fluid leaking out. Um, the other part of the uh, rear axle assembly is you got to get up underneath there and you got to look under there at the differential section, okay? You're like, well, how do you do that? Let me show you. You just do one of these. Oh, it looks good. I like it. Get all up underneath there, okay? All up under there. Checking those seals. Looking at the axles on the inside. We're checking the swivel joints. No cracks. That looks good. After you're done doing that, I don't care if it's humiliating. You know what's humiliating is when you got to call us for rear axle assembly and you just said, you know what? I should have done what your video said. I didn't get it all up underneath there. Stabilizer cylinders. Again, double check the fluid leaking. Um, important when it comes to the swing frame. We do get a lot of call for swing frames. And well, again, a lot of stress, a lot of pressure going on back here. Gotta make sure it's not cracked. Um, make sure, it's kind of hard to tell uh, when the machine's just stationary that you wanna check the play in these pins up here. So the way to do it is you gotta have somebody run the machine and just move the whole part back and forth slightly uh, and you'll be able to see the play in the pins back here. Back hoe. We're checking the pins and bushings all through here. Like we said in the front loader part, we gotta check this to make sure there's no cracks in the dip or in the, the dipper part and or in the uh, boom cylinder or boom section. Gotta make sure the boom section's good, no cracks. Make sure the dipper's in good shape, no cracks on that. Again, a lot of the trigger points are gonna be where the pins are, where all the stress is at. Make sure there ain't no cracks. The other thing, especially on these, making sure that where the pins go through, that this, it's all circular and it's not oblong and so forth like an egg. That'd be a real bad shape. The other thing you gotta be thinking about is what type of hoe do you need? How, how deep a dig depth do you have to go? This particular model, has an extend a hole option which allows it to go down about another two to four feet so you have to decide on that it is another expense it's another hydraulic cylinder inside it's some more moving components that could go wrong but hey you either do that or you got to rent an excavator all those times you need to dig a little bit more so it's an option you got to think about is an extend a hole or not to extend a hole i think that came out right stabilizers if you're gonna be on the streets, these steel ones, they're gonna ruin the street. It's all right, you get a fine for it, you just pay it and move on. Or you buy uh, some street pads that we can sell. We have occasionally uh, aftermarket ones that are available. Sometimes you just gotta buy it right from the OEM dealer, but call us first, of course. We'll uh, certainly beat the dealer's price, get it shipped right to your door. The next option would be how many buckets and what sizes buckets are coming with this backhoe I might buy. Are you gonna be d digging ditches out with this? Maybe, maybe not. You should buy a ditching bucket or see if it comes with it. Maybe you're just doing uh, some backyard drainage. You want a 12 inch, 14 inch bucket. So a lot of things come into play. Anytime you see pins, bushings, you just gotta wiggle it around a little bit. Just got a little play in there. Feel that? Little play. It's a used backhoe. It's the things that you look for in a used backhoe. It's gonna happen. Pins and bushings aren't too, too bad, but uh, overall it just depends on how much money you wanna spend versus how much money you wanna put into it. Are you mechanically inclined enough to change out pins and bushings? Or is this all stuff that's just gonna get bought and then sent to a dealer? The very first thing that you should do, however, if 
I can point this out. As soon as you get to somebody's yard that you're gonna be buying the machine at, the first thing you should do, one, check the oil. Two, check the radiator fluid. Things are good there. Check the hydraulic tank right on the side. We talked about that earlier. If all the fluids are good, run, start the machine. You gotta start the machine. You want it to run for at least 45 minutes, an hour. The, the heat has to get through a complete cycle a couple of times for the engine. The diesel engine's gotta warm up. They take a while. It's not like a gas car where it takes 15 minutes. 45 here in Buffalo when it's snowing, but um, you wanna get that engine running. It's gotta get running, it's gotta get hot, because when it gets hot, then the seals start expanding and then it exposes some leaks that you might have. Uh, obviously moving the machine through all the gears of the transmission, all the reverse gears in the transmission has to all get run. And I mean, hey, if you're gonna buy it, you might as well use and abuse it in their yard before you start forking out the money, okay? So, we're here to help out. Anything else you need, give us a call, 888-983-7847. Kind of quick parts, used, rebuilt, aftermarket parts, ready for you when you buy your used backhoe. I'm Ben Krentz, co-owner of Kind of Quit Parts. Till next time, thank you.